Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, the intermediate peak, as well as a brief discussion on Wyckoff distribution. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So we've been discussing this intermediate peak for quite a long time. I've also noticed a lot of people messaging me, asking me in the comment section on Telegram and on Twitter about Wyckoff distribution. And if you're not familiar with it, I will just show you the chart. Uh, this is what a, a typical distribution schematic for the Wyckoff, you know, for a Wyckoff distribution looks like. Uh, these moves up and back down. And, you know, we, we sort of continue these types of moves for a while where we put in slightly higher highs and whatnot. And this might not even be the most popular chart circulated, circulating, but you get the idea, right? It, it, it comes up, we get some type of distribution, and then we come back down. Okay. And, and the, the argument, right, is that this was this was circulating around around crypto uh crypto twitter crypto youtube etc for the last several weeks maybe for a month or two now i will remind you that we have been talking about an intermediate peak for a long time so whether you want to call it wyckoff distribution or you just want to call it we were too far extended in the short term and we needed a pullback it doesn't really matter and if you don't if if you don't remember what we're talking about we're specifically talking about the charts that we do on the first of every month we call it bitcoin the beauty of mathematics if you if you don't remember what it looks like they look something like this okay and you might say well ben you know this one was published on may 1st uh it's may 19th today so okay so you you pointed it out a few months or a few weeks before it happened like you know congratulations um who cares, right? But again, this wasn't the first time we mentioned it. So we basically, the idea is we, we talked about this peak here and then an intermediate peak in the next cycle, okay? And the only reason we did that was because we noted the similarities between this current cycle and the 2013 cycle. They're just delayed. It's just delayed this cycle because the intermediate peak in this cycle came a lot sooner. You can see the time between here to here is a lot shorter than here to here, okay? We've been calling for this for a while. You can say, well, since May 1st, well, hold on a second. Here's a video from April 2nd. The reason it wasn't on April 1st was because I did my April Fool's video on a April 1st, Fun with Crypto. If you need a laugh, maybe now's a good day to, to go watch it. Go watch the uh, Fun with Crypto video I did on, on April 1st. So here, we were talking about this intermediate peak potentially coming, um, and we drew it at 400%. You may say, well, why'd you draw it at 400%? You know, you, you, you have it drawn here at 400%, you have it drawn here at 400%. Why? Well, the reason was because we simply looked at the at the um, how far down the intermediate peak was from the prior peak. And you might say, well, what is this chart? Like, what is it? It doesn't look like any price chart I've ever seen, right? So we'll, we'll talk about that in a few minutes, but just for, for a minute before we get to that, look at the chart and, and you can see that even on April 2nd, we were talking about an intermediate peak. You may say, well, Ben, I mean, April 2nd, who cares, right? It was already fairly obvious we were extended. Let's go back further. Here's March 1st. We have the same thing drawn. And I speculated out, I, I drew a little speculation here that we would come up to the 400% and then we would come back down some. Now, I don't know how long we're going to go down. Maybe the bottom's already in, but it doesn't detract from the fact that it wasn't, it wasn't just me saying it. It was the data suggesting all along that we could get an intermediate peak this cycle. We were not getting that many tests of the 20 week SMA this cycle. And so the idea was, are we too far gone? And so March 1st, it's like, Okay, fine. January 1st, same thing. Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, part seven. Look, part nine, part 10, part 11. You can go watch part eight, part six, part five. But here's, here's January 1st. <laughs> we said the same thing. And by the way, back in January, this was when Bitcoin was trading for like 30K. For 30, it was trading like 30K and we were talking about, you know, the, the total market cap extension from the fair value logarithmic regression trend line. And, and we, we literally drew out here on January 1st, a crazy mania move, followed by a retracement, and then another peak later on. I don't remember anyone mentioning Wyckoff distribution back then, but it was still buried in the math. The, the, the pattern was still there from 2013. I don't remember it back then. Maybe my biggest fault is not naming it something a little more clever. Maybe I should call it, some, call it something else that doesn't involve the word mathematics. Let's go back further. Part six, 
we were already identifying the similarities between this cycle and this cycle, the current cycle and the one in 2013. This was back in December. This was back in December before we even broke the all-time high. You want to go back even further, we were noting the similarities back in November. Even in November, we were talking about the similarities between the current cycle and the one two cycles ago and discussing the implication of a potential intermediate peak. We go back even further, September, this was before it was clear what was going to happen. We always contended we would go back up. It wasn't clear yet that we were gonna have this, this complete spike. You go back even further. Um, well, actually this one's in October, uh, but, but basically the idea is the same. We, we, we were discussing the implications of this move. October should go here. We were discussing the implications of this move for a long time. And you might say, well, Ben, like, why don't we actually get to something useful? Because at the end of the day, you know, no one really cares about what's happened. How do we, how do we go forward? Okay. Well, we'll do an update on the chart. We just did one yesterday or two days ago. Um, but here we are. This is the, this is where it's coming from. This is the total crypto market capitalization. The red line is our fair value logarithmic regression trend line. And this chart is just the extension from it. It's just the, the, the extension from it shifted by a hundred percent. And exactly, exactly where the, the, um, the market cap came up to this little, uh, this little bubble that we drew, uh, one third, one third of the, of the prior extension. That's where the data suggested, not where Ben suggested. That's where the data suggested we might have a pullback, an intermediate top, an intermediate top. So, you know, again, you, the idea that the idea that this was not buried in the mouth all along is simply not true. We've been we've literally been talking about this chart on the channel for a long time now, a long time. And we, we've been discussing an intermediate peak for a long time. Remember, to have a double peak cycle, you have to have a first peak. To have a double peak cycle, you have to have a first peak. Similar similar moves. Now, whether we go straight back up and we all sing kumbaya as we celebrate the four-year cycle or you know we do something a little bit more what i would consider to be more realistic and it takes a little bit longer or maybe even longer than that i don't yet know but i am convinced that over the duration of the next couple years bitcoin should trend well into the six figures if, it, if not sooner if not sooner so you know I, I look at these charts and i say if you want to call it if you want to call it wyckoff distribution um, you can call it that. But again, we also have identified that the market cycle so far had been overheated because we were ahead of schedule compared to the ROI from the halving. We were ahead of schedule with the ROI from the bottom. It seemed like we were just ahead of schedule. Everything seemed ahead of schedule. And that's why for the last six months, we had been discussing the idea of a double peak cycle. You can call it Wyckoff distribution, or you can say it was buried in the math all along. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. I'll see you next time. Bye.